Hey guys, welcome into this segment from our full length The Onside Kick podcast. In order to get the full podcast, go down to the description, go to blog talk radio backslash The Onside Kick to download the full thing. Enjoy, everybody. And Mark, we're going to move on into our last topic. The podcast is almost over. I know me and you have been here for a while. It's been a long day. Recording those podcasts for you guys. But we're going to talk about something. This is something where you're like, oh, let's do a video. I'm like, fuck it. Let's put it in the podcast. Like, why not? And we're going to be talking about the, if you guys haven't heard, the Pacific Professional Football League or the PPFL. PPFL. And Mark, I'm just going to ask you straight out. So straight out, straight out, straight, straight out. out. Like we said, it's late. Good idea, bad idea. Uh, he- here's the thing. I think it's a good idea, uh, but I don't think it's going to necessarily Catch work. on? Yeah, I don't think it's going to work. So for, for those of you who might not know about the Pac Pro, uh, the PPFL. The, I like the PPFL. I like better. PPFL a PPFL. lot better. PPFL. Um, the Wee Wee FL. <laughs> wee Wee. Uh, Maybe they should start in France. Who knows? <laughs> the The thing I like about this is – all right, let me start with this. What this is, it's supposed to be an alternative to the NCAA. So if you are f- four years or less removed from high school, you can go in this league where there are four teams, and they'll play a few games, I guess. I don't know because only four teams. You can't play that many games. Uh, and you will – very pro style have this alternative to the college football thing and you will actually get paid. You will get paid. The number they're throwing out is $50,000. This is expensive as shit because these are like 50 player teams Mm -hmm. and this isn't the NFL. This isn't even NCAA. They're not going to be making that much money. I can't imagine they'll be making that much money. Um, They're just setting it up as an alternative kind of to teach the pro style. So people go into college football, I mean, I'm sorry, go into the NFL uh, a little bit more used to what it's going to be as opposed to college football, which we mentioned in the last podcast with Sean Watson, all about the gimmicks, all about the spread, all about how fast can we go, things like that. It's where they get experimental. That and means if it's if each player makes 50000 by the way, mm-hmm. which is not going to be true. Everyone's not going to make the same salary, I don't think. Unless that's what they, they said. They are. That's what they said. If everyone makes the same salary, that means that's a total of $2,500 just spent on players. Yeah. And that's not even talking about the coaches, the mm-hmm. staff, insurance, mm-hmm. the actual fields. There's a lot that's going into this for something that honestly probably is not going to be televised. Well, and I the thing that I see this being is I don't see this catching on. I don't see this being a for sure alternative. I don't think that it's going to be where the while the primetime podcast focuses on NCAA, me and Mark talk about the pack Bro, the, the PPFL. PPFL. Yeah, of I course. like that better. And their players, mm-hmm. I just see eventually I see this being the, if enough players go to it from college, and I'm not saying just any players, because like if one two-star recruit say, ah, I'm going to go to the PPFL, no one's no one's going to care because the yeah. five, the four five-star recruits are going to still be going to like Alabama, Auburn, and those teams. It's going to be if they can steal away some top recruits and college eventually goes, well, fuck it. Let's pay the kids. Yeah. But the problem is if you are a talented – if you're one of, like, the top 250 talents in the NFL mm-hmm. – I mean, I'm sorry, going into college football. Why would you choose to go here into this untested thing that we have no idea what it's going to be like? Than college. As opposed to college where you're going to party. You're going to be on TV. Because you're going to make You money. can play in bowl games. You're going to make money, sure. You're going to play in bowl games, but you're not going to because you're going to care about your draft stock. Good good, <laughs> good point. Uh, but you know what I'm going to say to the you're going to make money if mm-hmm. I'm a college head coach? I say, yeah, but you're going to make a lot of money when you get to the pros. Yeah, but it's one of those things where I feel like this league, their main selling point is, hey, you want to get paid out of high school? Yeah. You want to get paid out of high you school? You want to make $50,000? Now, this in the – and I know that – I mean, this is a football podcast, but mm-hmm. I think this would work a lot better in basketball. 110% The, re- the yep. reason why is because of the one and done. Yeah. You have one year – I get paid for one year, and then I can go to the pros. you got to okay. wait three years mm-hmm. before you can go into the NFL draft. And, I mean, you think about it. If you're getting paid $50,000, if you stay at the three-year minimum, you're making one hundred and fifty k over three years, which is a lot of money. 
mm-hmm. compared to zero dollars in college. Although but, to be fair, your college education costs more than one hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, but let's make. be honest: how many student athletes are actually going for the cow like for the classroom? There are far less than you than should. Not not saying that all of them don't go to class, but it's one of those things where Cardell Jones said it best: "I ain't here to play school." Yeah, there oh, are yeah. players that think like that. Where getting to the pros is my only mo, mm-hmm. and maybe the maybe this league works for them because they don't have to worry about school. And the thing that would be the most interesting thing, and this is where the educational part comes in. And I didn't hear Don Yee, Tom Brady's agent, who found is the founders of this league, along with Michael Strahan and Ed McCaffrey, who is the father of Christian McCaffrey. The thing that this could really sell, and I think should be their selling point from the educational side, is how many players do you see going to the pros don't know how to handle being a pro? You can go to college. You can party and be an amateur, or you can come here and learn how to be a pro before being a pro. Honestly, I think that this I don't that, wanna, that's where they could that's where they could make their big can, selling point of we yeah. are going to teach you how to handle having a paycheck mm-hmm. and being a professional. And, and athlete. someone like Mike Shanahan uh is going to really drive that type of thing home. That's one of his big points. But I, I don't think that's really what they're going to do. If anything, no, I'm saying they should think though. about this though. Think about when you were 18. Mm-hmm. If you're getting fifty thousand dollars, you're not going to get one check, but you're going to get fifty thousand yeah. dollars a year. You're not going to do responsible things with that money. Oh no, you're going to spend it on anything you you want. Yeah. So we think that the the college kids are doing dumb things in the frat parties, which they are. Mm-hmm. But we think that's an issue. Now imagine if you gave all those football players fifty thousand dollars. They're going to do some really fucking dumb things now. There will be the exception, the few exceptions that do not, but they're going to do dumb things. And those kids, I can guarantee you, if you're getting paid $50,000, you are not going to college. I'm gonna Why th- would you? I'm going to throw this out there, and this might be not the most PC thing to say. All right. But it's the first thing that comes to my mind. How many drug addictions start because of, I got money. I, I got, got money, money Let's do and this. I'm bored. Yeah. Well, it's not. I'm yeah. not talking about like the hard drugs like heroin or cocaine. I'm no, talking but about just weed. Yeah, people get bored and they want to do something fun, how so many, they do whatever. Like, how many weed issues? If they got money. And I say weed issues yeah. have we had with the NFL draft with just college kids? Now you're giving them fifty thousand dollars to spend. And yeah. what this league is going to be mostly in California, where it's legal. Yeah. I just think that, you know, the, this league is getting to something. It is getting to the fact that there should be some sort of developmental league system in the NFL for the people who are not quite ready to go mm-hmm. from college to the NFL, for the guys who are basically practice squad players or the ones who get on a team, they're there for a couple of weeks, they get cut, they move to this team, they're there for three weeks, they get cut, now they're one week, you know, those type of guys. Those guys should have something, you know. Uh, I think that would be great. This is not that. This is not that solution. I would love to see something, and I've, you know, played around with my own thoughts of what I think would be cool, have uh, you can't have all 32 teams, of course, have their own farm system. Mm-hmm. This is not baseball. It's not going to work. Uh, but you could you could set something up where where these you know waiver wires teams can share developmental teams or whatever. Um, what I would love to see is something like that get developed. Something where there is, I jokingly call college football the minor league NFL. Uh, but you could have some developmental minor league D league. Something that they play in the spring, you know, whatever it well, could be. And the end of this ESPN article even said, like, and I'm not quite sure if you've mm-hmm. mentioned this, but they said that this PPFL is the second one of these leagues to pop there up. There is another one that the, they're trying to do, that yeah. The NFL notified that they're trying to do a 32-team spring D-league, basically, mm-hmm. that would operate in April of 2017 and would work with NFL veterans who do not have contracts. Yeah, and I I think that's the type of thing that we 
we need for the NFL, especially because a lot of people are complaining that, oh, the new CBA and stuff, it limits what we're able to do, so players aren't ready in time. Like, okay, this is great. This like, is another thing. Like, to get how much do you hear that with O-line talk? Yeah, oh, for sure. So, it, yeah, this would be a great way to do that. Something that really concerns me about the PPFL, when you have these guys who are making $50,000, mm-hmm. this is the number that's been thrown out. We're not just throwing it out. This is what's yeah. been said. Uh, straight out of high school, that's a lot of money for a lot of these kids who aren't making anything. Uh, and what happens to the kid that doesn't get drafted? Now he goes and works at Walmart and makes 9 bucks an hour? No, he goes to the NFL D-League. <laughs> I mean, if we develop it, sure. But, like, you have this kid who doesn't make it, and it's just— And he's got no education to fall on now. There's no education. There's nothing for this kid. And now he's got to, at the age of 22, has to go back to college and mm-hmm. start now. Sure, he had fifty thousand dollars for four hope, years. Hope, but I hope you saved up uh, one of those years' salary to pay for college. Right, one. <laughs> you're gonna need a lot more than one, and you're not gonna be uh, eligible for for college football now. So mm-hmm. that sucks. I just think that Good this point. is basketball, though. There you go, one and done. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is getting at the problem, and this is getting at something nice. It's just it's not the solution, not yet. Yeah, I mean, this is something where the first thing I thought of. I know it's not because this was something totally different, but I just thought, what, we're trying to make a a college USFL? That's what we're trying to do? Yeah. Basically a springtime college football version to where, and I know you mentioned before we started to record what's going to stop players from trying to do both college and the pros. That's not going to be smart because you got spring ball in like May and April, You've got camps opening up while this league would be going on, mm-hmm. and plus college coaches aren't going to be okay not want it, yeah. with you going and maybe risking injury to play in these games that don't mean anything to them where they want to win their regular season. I still think the main thing, two thoughts from this, is not a good idea or a bad idea in my mind. If it wants to be a good idea, what it has to do is I say – it has to maybe be the alternative for players who don't want to go to college but can teach players, okay, this is your salary. We're teaching you how to manage your money and how to manage a paycheck because most of these people, when you go to the NFL, what's going to be more of a shock, getting $50,000 from nothing or getting a lot more, getting millions of dollars if you're one, if nothing. you're one of those few that do but, get a million, but that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. how like there's a thirty for thirty documentary called Broke. Yep, where talk like athletes talk about their spending. So if it can hit that, great idea, great idea to help players who don't want to go to college, but still teach them how to manage their money. But really, I think that this would ultimately just be, oh, so this league's going up. We're losing some uh, five star recruits. Fuck it, let's just pay them. Let's just pay the college kids. I can't see that happening. That's the thing that, like, I could either see that's how it becomes good, and that's the only way that this is going to affect college. It's going to be the only effect it has on college if it does. I just still, I, logistically to me, paying college players for football doesn't, it's never going to work. I cannot see a way where it ever works, and I don't you see got it happening. Tons of other sports that are they getting where the same treatment? Where do you draw the line? And my, you know, do we play basketball? Do we pay the basketball players? Do we pay the volleyball players? What about lacrosse? The golf team? You know, there's a lot of cross country. There's a track, lot of people that are getting full swimming, tuition scholarships, diving. lesser than that. You mm-hmm. know, what do they get? Do we take away the scholarships <laughs> now because they're getting paid? You know, mm-hmm. what is that? And then it's also, of course, the the simple fact. When you bring this of not only where do you draw the line on that, but how much are you really going to give these players in that case? And who gets what, who gets where? There's a lot of issues with that, and it all adds up. So, hey, you think that Alabama has a dynasty now? Wait till they're the only ones that have the money to pay their players because Vanderbilt's not as good. They don't make as much money. They can't afford to pay their players. A lot of issues. Well, and That's this, a different video. And this is where you guys are going to come in. Let us know what you guys think of the PPFL, the Pacific Professional, the Pac-Pro the Football PP. League. 
Let us know down below in the, the comments PB section. Or league. hit us up on Twitter at the Mark Weber at Ricky Widmer. Let us know what you thought about today's podcast. And if you have not already, go make sure to check out our other podcast we did this week where we talked about all the head coaching moves that had happened this week. Five of them we mentioned in that podcast. Well, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to check out patreon.com backslash most valuable podcast to support the podcast in additional ways than watching and listening today. I want to thank you guys one last time for watching and listening. And until tomorrow, and as always, have a good day, everybody. Yeah, fuck that up. Fuck that up. Whatever. We're going to roll with it. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that segment from the Onside Kick. If you think the fun stops there, you're wrong because click the video right over here. What are you thinking? Come on. Click it. It's going to go away. It's going to go away. Bye, everybody.